All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to find the deflection at point C here using the moment area method for this uh, this overhanging beam. All right, so the first thing that we do is we draw the free body diagram and shear force diagram. And then once we have the bending moment diagram drawn, what we do is we make a copy of it and we'll just bring that down uh, right below. You can do it on the same drawing, but I recommend doing a, a whole new one if you have the time for it. Um, and then we, we convert this to the M over EI diagram. So we divide every point on the graph by EI. So when we have 50 kilonewton meters divided by EI, we get negative 0 0.0025 meters to the minus 1. All right, so what we want to do now is we're going to be working with the areas here to uh, the, the, these composite areas, basically of the overall larger shape. So if we label this area as area 1, in this area is area 2. Their areas are negative 0.0025 radians and negative 0.00125 radians for this side. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to draw a deflected structure for this because it's uh, because it's non-symmetrical. We're going to want the, the deflected structure before we, before we proceed because it's going to help us kind of plan out what we do for the problem. So it looks something like this where it's basically coming up in the middle and then down on the right hand side. Um, you can you can kind of check this. Uh, this is intuitively this is how we would expect it to be, but you can also see like this moment diagram. Uh, it's all negative moments, uh, so that gives us a concave down. Um, and then with these kind of constraints or boundary conditions, uh, there's basically only one way to make this thing so that it's concave down the whole way across the span. All right. So what we want to do here is let's label on our points. So this was point A. This was point B and uh, this was point C here on the undeflected structure. So if we draw a tangent line at point B, then we can compare it to the tangents that would be at A, which would be something like this, and at B, which would be something like this. So that would mean that the tangential he uh, deviation here uh, of, of the tangent line at C with respect to B would be this measurement in here. So this is TC with respect to B. And then this measurement here, so we'd have like, this guy. Uh, this is uh, TA with respect to B. So we can really easily calculate these if we know, if we find the distances of the centroids, the distance, uh, so this would be like X1, the distance from the centroid of this shape over to point A, and then this would be from the distance from this centroid over to point, uh, to point C here would be X2. So the reason we're going over from the centroid from here over to C and then from this centroid over to A is when we're looking when we're doing the second moment area theorem or the yeah the second moment area theorem from B to C that the tangential deviation of C with respect to B um, it uses the distance from this centroid from from the, the the centroid of all the area that we're considering to C which is we're going basically to that point that we're looking for the deviation at. Same thing here when we're in when we're in this other region, but from A to B, and we're applying the second moment area theorem uh, in this region. When we're looking at the tangential deviation of A with respect to B, so A's tangent line is like this, and so we're finding the tangential deviation of A with respect to B. So it's actually going to probably give us a negative value because this is below B. Uh, but when we're looking for that information at A, then we're taking the distance from the centroid of the area to that point that we're looking for information about, which is point A. Okay, so x1 here is just, uh, this distance is just 2 thirds times the base, uh, which is 2 meters, so times 2 meters. Uh, so that's going to give us 1.333 meters. And then when we're looking at here, this is just 2 thirds times the base of this triangle, basically to take measuring the distance of the centroid to the short side of the triangle, and that's times 1 meter. Um, so this is just going to be equal to 0 0.667 meters. So let's figure out what TAB is and TCB is, but just keep in mind that neither of these measurements are the actual deflection at C, but we're going to use them to calculate the actual deflection. So first of all, um, for T, the tangential deviation of A with respect to B, uh, this is just equal to x bar 1 times, that's a 1, times A1. So that's 1.333 meters times this A1 here that was negative 0.0025 radians. And uh, that's going to give us the answer of negative 0.0033 meters, which is negative 3.33 millimeters. 
All right, so that's saying that the tangent at A is 3.33 millimeters below the tangent of B when we're at point A. So this here, this distance, this guy right there, uh, this is equal to 3.33 millimeters. All right, let's uh, let's continue on with this. Let's do a tangential deviation of C with respect to B because we can right now. Um, so tangential deviation of C with respect to B is equal to x bar 2 times area 2. And uh, so we get 0 0.667 meters times area 2 was negative 0 0.00125 radians, which gives us negative 0 0.00833, which is negative 8. No, sorry, negative 0 0.8. 3 millimeters. So this little distance in here, TC with respect to B, is equal to 0 0.833 millimeters. Alright, so that's cool. We have this tangential deviation and we have this tangential deviation, but we still don't have the actual deflection here at C. What's missing from the actual deflection here at C is this distance here. We'll call it like little c. And really, the deflection at C, yc, is going to be equal to the sum of little c plus the tangential deviation of C with respect to B. And this is hopefully obvious that it's the sum of these because this deflected structure is the actual, basically this is a plot of the actual deflected structure. And when we put a tangent line on there, it's, it's basically like bisecting this, this length that goes from the original uh, position down to the deflected position, and if we already know part of the deflected position, we already know part of this line, then we just have to add in this unknown part of the line to get the total deflection. Now we can do that, it's actually pretty clever how we do that. Um, if we look at the angle here that the tangent line is forming with this axis, then this angle here is also the same angle, right? That's just like basic geometry, but when you first look at this problem, you might not have kind of realized that that's going on. So basically we get these two similar triangles here. So they have a common angle there. You might as well, like you could just rotate this one right inside and then it would be like sitting like like inside there basically. Um, so we just do similar triangles because we have, we know the lengths of each of these um, and we know the height of one of them. So really we have, uh, let's squeeze it in here, we have 3.33 millimeters so that's the, this one's height over its base of two meters it is going to be equal to this little c in units of millimeters over its length and, or its base there and it was one meter so we just do a simple cross multiplication and the units cancel out so we get one times 3.33 divided by two that gives us a little c here we can even write it here little c is equal to 1.667 millimeters. Cool. So if we just add up little c right here and uh, tangential deviation of c with respect to b, these two values, we're getting the entire basical, basically the entire distance that the uh, the deflected structure, that this point on the deflected structure has traveled. And uh, so when we sum those up, we get um, 2.5 meter, 2.5 millimeters. And really this is um, depending on how you're defining your convention, you might want to say this is down, or if you've strictly defined that, you know, like positive y is in the upward direction, um, then you would want to indicate that this is in fact negative. So the reason this negative doesn't always show up in here is, well, I guess this value here was negative. Um, but uh, you see, like just with triangles and stuff, watch out when you're doing this that your signs are correct. Um, and then in case, so like, even that, you can put negative 1.667 meters, millimeters, I guess. Uh, you just want to indicate that you know which way this thing is going and you add them properly. You're not like adding a positive and a negative value in here when really they're summing up as two parts of one measurement.